All right. So welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. I'm glad you were able to make it. As I'm sure you know, today's info session or live panel, um, a panel of two, is for our BAMD accelerated program here in the School of Arts and Sciences, Newark, at Rutgers University, Newark. And so before we get into the specific content, I do just want us to take a moment to introduce ourselves so you know who these folks are that are talking to you this evening. Um, so hi, everyone. Um, my name is Dean Spencer Carrion. I am an assistant dean in the School of Arts and Sciences, Newark, I'm specifically working with recruitment and community engagement. So for all of our prospective and new students, um, I am one of the folks that will be doing some outreach and connecting with you more. And with me today is... Hello, hello, hello. Uh, this is Dean Falins. I'm the Assistant Dean for Pre-Professional Services, um, and I'm also the individual who oversees this amazing BAMD program. Yes, he is. All right. So, some fun facts about Rutgers University Newark. I know you're all here because of our incredible BAMD program, but I think it's important to know a little bit about the institution that you may be attending. Um, so for those of you who may not know, Rutgers University Newark is located in Newark. Um, not a surprise there, it's in the name, but Newark, for those of you who don't know, is the largest city in New Jersey. Um, we're just a quick train ride away from Manhattan, so we're just by New York City. We're in a vibrant, thriving metro urban location, which has a lot of advantages. A little of those I'm going to talk about in a couple slides, um, but the location for our university definitely makes us unique. The School of Arts and Sciences Newark specifically um, is comprised of two undergraduate colleges. So we've got the Newark College of Arts and Sciences and University College Newark. And Newark College of Arts and Sciences is actually the oldest, the largest, and the only liberal arts college here at Rutgers University Newark, which is a fun fact about us. Our campus as a whole does enroll almost 13,000 students and nearly 60% of those belong to us at the School of Arts and Sciences, Newark. We have, you know, a lot of different programs and a lot of strong STEM-based programs um, that complement, you know, what you're looking for today, which is the BAMD program. And we have a lot of students that come to our campus to earn their degrees. Rutgers University Newark is also one of the most diverse universities in the nation. For the last 20 years, we've been at the top of the list of most diverse institutions in the country. And that says a lot about our mission as an institution. Our community is driven by our mission, which really focuses on diversity, equity, and inclusion. And if you speak to our current students about, you know, their experience as a Rutgers University Newark student, a lot of the time you'll hear them speak to the diversity of not just the students on campus, but the staff, the faculty, the professionals, and diverse in all manners of the word, right? And so that's a really big thing um, that drives our mission as a university. And then we also have over 100 student clubs and organizations on campus. So talking a little bit about campus life itself, once you're a student here and on campus pursuing your degree, there's a lot of extracurricular and co-curricular opportunities for you to get involved in that can really, um, you know, create an even more enriching experience for you. So we have um, clubs and organizations such as MAPS, which is the Minority Association for Pre-Health Students, we have Rutgers Newark Red Cross. We have a pre-medical society. And those are just three that I could fit on the slide. But we have tons of organizations that students choose to get involved in that really help them, you know, make a, even more of their undergraduate experience and prepare them for their future careers. So our seven-year accelerated BAMD program. This program is offered jointly between the School of Arts and Sciences, Newark, and New Jersey Medical School at Rutgers University. And so students who are admitted into this program are guaranteed admission to medical school provided they maintain all of the program requirements during their time here. Both of our campuses share the city of Newark, which is Going back to what I said before, such an advantage to the location of our school. This close proximity offers our students while they're here you need a unique opportunity, excuse me, to engage um, with the community, with the folks in and of Newark, and network with students and professionals in that city, in our community for all seven years of their program, which 
you know, is extremely advantageous and really beneficial for the students who participate in this program. A little bit of application information. So for those of you who don't know, um, the deadline is coming up to apply for this program and to apply to Rutgers University of Newark, November 1st, which is my birthday. So I'm really excited for this, not just because it's your deadline, but because it's a big day for me, um, is the deadline to apply to this program, right? So you want to make sure that you are getting all of your information and materials together to be on time. That is, you know, your first impression to the program. You want to make sure that you're getting all of your stuff together and compiled to successfully be submitted on time. And so applicants need to meet the following requirements. You must have achieved a minimum SAT score of a 1400 in critical reading and math combined in one test administration. And that exam must have been taken during or prior to October 2020. So if you've already taken the SAT, but you plan to retest for whatever reason, you will not be able to submit that retest score after October 2020 to, be, to get the eligibility requirement for this program. Similarly, um, if you take the ACT, you would need, an, need a composite score of a 32 or above, um, and that could be accepted in lieu of an SAT score, but you have to make sure you have taken the optional writing section, and similarly, that exam need to have been, needs to have been taken during or prior to October 2020. And last but not least, applicants must be enrolled in their senior year of high school at the time of application. So, about the questions and answers that I'm sure you have, we have questions coming in. We've got lists of questions. And Dean Salenz is our expert, and he's going to be answering these questions for you all so you know without a shadow of a doubt what you need to do before November 1st, which is this upcoming Sunday. Um, so we know that you have time over this weekend now to finish everything up if you haven't. Um, Dean Flens is going to answer some questions for us. So <clears throat> the first question that, um, and I don't think this was fully covered in the session uh, that, or the slides I just covered, but so we've heard that there are two applications for the BAMD program. So can you explain, you know, do both applications need to be submitted and do they have to be submitted in a specific order? That is a great question. So there are two applications. Um, as you alluded to earlier, there is the main application that you need for the institution. So that in itself does have to be submitted by November 1st. Uh, and in that application, you'll have the ability to indicate your interest in the BAD program. There also is a supplemental application that is on our website um, that you also have to complete, which is where you're going to submit your essay, your letters of recommendations, uh, basic information about yourself and your high school, and uh, self-report on your scores. So that in itself is also due November 1st. You don't have to submit the institution application before the supplemental or the supplemental before the institution. You can submit either one. They're both readily available to you right now. Perfect. Thank you. So where can these applicants find the links and the information for how to access both of these applications, the RUN and the supplemental? So if you can go on our website, uh, you can either, the long address is very, is very long, but if you Google Rutgers University Newark BA and D program, it's going to be the first link that you click on. And through that link, uh, there's going to be, you're going to have the ability to see the entire process from A to Z, from applying to the institution to applying for the supplemental application. Thank you. I do see a couple questions came in about letters of recommendation. And so how should letters of recommendation be submitted? And if students have questions about that or their references have questions about that, um, who would they contact to remedy that issue? That's another great question because uh, I, I have been getting a lot of those questions as well. You're not directly submitting letters of recommendations to us. When you begin to complete your supplemental application, there's going to be a portion on there where you can indicate your recommender's name and your recommender's email. Once you've submitted your entire application, your recommender is going to receive a link in which they can upload their letter of recommendation. 
If for whatever reason you or your recommender is having difficulty with this particular area, you can always feel free to send me an email, uh, which is my first dot lot last name at uh, Rutgers.edu. So it's C H A Z Z dot F E L L E N Z at Rutgers.edu. Thank you. So let's see. We've got a lot of questions rolling in, <laughs> so I'm sort of trying to figure I, out. <laughs> I have seen a lot of questions around the uh, SAT and ACT score. So yeah. one of the consistent questions that I'm seeing throughout this list right now is, uh, do we super score? So we do not super score. It does have to, if you're doing the SAT, it has to be a 1400 of your highest one sitting. So that means whatever your highest score is um, in one test, that's the score that we're taking. Thank you. Someone did ask, they have all of their materials compiled and ready. They just want to make sure it's in the right format. So I'm assuming, but I don't want to assume, that PDF and or Word document to attach as one file would likely be acceptable. But is there a specification about which file, when merging all of their materials, they would need to select? No, there's no specifications. Um, from what I've been told, if you do it as Word, you're probably going to be able to combine a lot more stuff but we accept it in JPEG, PDF, any of the files that you can submit. There is a four megabyte um, maximum limit that you have to submit. So if it's anything beyond that, you may have to condense or, or uh, take some things out, um, but you can upload everything as one document and just save it and submit it right in the supplemental application. Great, thank you. When students do submit the supplemental application, does a confirmation get sent to their email address? So there's, uh, not for the supplemental application. The way uh, you'll know if your application has been submitted completely is if at the very end, once you hit submit, you're going to receive, you're going to see on your screen a summary of everything you input it, and no, uh, you won't have an option to edit that information. So you'll see the summary of everything you submitted right on your screen. Thank you. A really great question. Um, so someone asked, is there a specific major you pursue in this program for your bachelor's degree? Like, do all students in this program pursue a degree in biology or chemistry? Do you choose a different major? Um, what does that look like? Yeah, whoever asked that question, that's a great question, because there's a huge misconception that you have to be a science major in order to get to medical school, let alone um, a, an accelerated program such as this. Um, however, that's not the case. Uh, you're going to roll declare almost any major that we have on our uh, campus except for business or engineering and uh, maybe one or two others. Uh, for the most part, all of the programs within the School of Arts and Sciences, uh, you would be able to do. Um, we have currently English um, BAMD students. We have history BAMD students. We do have the traditional biology BAMD students. Um, but in short, um, there's a, you can do almost anything with us. We actually make custom curriculum plans for each of our BAMD uh, students uh, to meet whatever your interests are uh, for your educational path. Thank you. Someone also asked, if you're a part of the BAMD program, would you also be able to be a part of other special programs like our honors program? Oh, definitely. Uh, so if you are part of BAMD, you are automatically enrolled into our honors college. If you are interested in any of the other specialty programs like the Honors Living Learning Community or any other type of program, that is very possible. Uh, what we would end up doing is from the very, if, if accepted into these numerous different programs, I would be working with the coordinators of each of those programs to ensure that you would have a curriculum that is uh, not too overpowering and it's going to be enough for you to graduate within three years that you're at our institution. Perfect. Um, a couple of specific questions folks had about the supplemental application, and I think I know the answer to this one. They basically asked, does every applicant for BAMD have to submit the supplemental and the RUN application or just the RUN? you got to submit both, and all of your materials you submit with those applications, right? So that's why the deadline for those exam dates and those scores is during or prior to October so that the scores you've earned are submitted with your application. So you wouldn't submit your SAT and ACT scores after the fact. There is um, another question that I've been getting consistently via email 
For those of you who are submitting the supplemental application and you are not a U.S. citizen, because there is a portion in there we have to indicate your last six uh, numbers of your social security number, just put six zeros. I'll know what that means, and then that'll give you the ability to then move on. Um, if you want to send me an email just to elaborate a little bit more, uh, you can do so, uh, but uh, you can just put in uh, zeros for any of the answers that's not applicable to you. Thank you. A couple other questions I'm seeing about recommendations or letters of recommendation. So some students are um, having concerns about how to include them in the portfolio. Can you just reiterate for them um, yep. because they can't view it and they can't include it in their own file what that process is? Yeah, no problem at all. So for your letters of recommendations, I know there was an older process where you would, uh, your counselor would actually submit everything on your behalf. However, with the process that we now have, when you're opening up your supplemental application, on the second tab at the very bottom, there's three boxes where you can indicate three different recommenders and then three additional boxes for their uh, email addresses. Once you've submitted your entire application, your recommenders are going to receive a link that al allows for them to upload uh, the letter of recommendation directly to me. So you're not uploading any letter, letters or recommendations on behalf of anybody. Your recommenders will do that once you've indicated their name and their email address. Thank you. I love this question. Someone just asked, how are people on campus? Um, what's it like? And they also said that they're especially curious about things like the choirs because they love to sing. And that makes me excited because obviously, yes, you're here for the BAMD program, but that's going to be, you know, your whole life is going to be those next few years, and there's going to be stuff that you want to do extracurricularly. I think the people at Rutgers University of New York are awesome. Um, everyone I meet is very friendly. Folks are never going to turn down a conversation. Um, and I love to hear that you want to get involved in extracurricular activities like choir or singing, because that's going to enrich your experience. Um, being able to have multiple passions, both academic and maybe outside of academics, is going to make this an even more incredible time of your life. Um, Dean Valenz, do you have anything you want to add about what are the people like at Rutgers North? I think you answered it perfectly. I mean, we're such a diverse campus where it's when you think you know it all, you're going to learn something new. Just from the people that you're, you're walking past, the students that are in your class, the diverse staff and faculty that you're going to be introduced to throughout these next couple of years, the research opportunities that you're all going to have the ability to do as early as your first year. This is, it's just so warm and welcoming um, environment, and it's something to learn almost every day, whether it's culturally or educationally. There, there's something for everybody at this institution. Thank you. So a quick question. So if not admitted upon entering their first year into the BAMD program, are there other opportunities to pursue medical school here at Rutgers University Newark or any other accelerated paths that students can take? Yeah, so I'll start with the first part. So let's say you're not accepted into this program, but you still decide, you know what, Rutgers Newark is for me. This is where I want to get my education from. I oversee our office, which is pre-professional services, which oversees all health programs. So whether you want to become a doctor, PA, PT, OT, any of these types of health um, specialties, uh, we do personalized advisement for every student who is interested in this um, path. So whether that means custom curriculum plans, whether that is assistance with uh, gaining experience for your resume, both clinically, academically, so forth and so on, uh, getting involved with student organizations, everything that makes you an amazing applicant for the professional schools you're looking for, we set you up on that journey uh, through our office. So that would be the first step. Let's say you are still interested in the BAMD program. Um, if you weren't accepted through the high school program, you do have the ability to apply for this program again at the end of your second year if you are enrolled at Rutgers University North since your first year. Uh, so you will have the ability uh, to apply again should this be something you're still interested in at that point. And then we also have tons of other amazing programs like our health professions learning community and so many other things that you can get involved in should this not be should this uh, not work in your first go around. Thank you. A couple questions about transcripts. Um, one specifically I'm seeing says it says we need to submit an official transcript. 
do we send this link to our guidance counselor? How do we submit, can we just submit an unofficial transcript? So um, I know at least for the ad admissions application to RUN, you do need to submit official transcripts through your high school. And so your high school would send that from them to us. Um, that wouldn't be something that necessarily you get from your high school and then send to us yourself. Um, but when it comes to the supplemental application, Dean Falenz is an unofficial to be attached within that file that's submitted? That, uh, that is, uh, yes, we will need um, a transcript. Um, we understand that for many of the schools, everybody's experiencing challenges because of COVID uh, right now. However, we will accept the unofficial as of right now, but should you advance in the application process, we wouldn't need that official transcript, um, but we will communicate that um, as the time comes. Perfect, thank you. I'm sorting through the questions. Y'all have a lot of questions and I love to see that, but also I wanna make sure I'm not asking the same question over and over. <laughs> so it's taking me a moment to sort through. And I don't know, Dean Flins, if you've gotten some personal questions in your Q&A box, I've had some in the general box and some in mine. So if you have any that you've seen that you wanna touch upon next, definitely okay. let me know. The, um, as fast as I'm reading it, 10 more <laughs> are coming in. Because <laughs> I also got about six private messages that asked, are you the only one in this presentation? We have about 135 people on right now. So we're definitely gonna try to get through um, all of your questions as best as possible. Yeah, um, and, and we have, you know, other opportunities for you to connect with us, and I'll include some contact information and some resources after, you know, we're on social media, we have email, um, but we might not be able to get to everyone's question this evening. Um, so hopefully we, we cover as many as we possibly can. There is um, another question that is consistently coming in about letters of recommendations. Uh, for this particular cycle, given COVID, we are extending, um, about two or three days for letters of recommendation. So everything is supposed to be in by November 1st, and you should try your hardest to connect with your recommenders to have these letters submitted by that time. But we will uh, give a little cushion um, of a few days uh, for those letters to come in. However, your application, there is no cushion for that, and you have to submit your application by November 1st. So my recommendation to everybody is, Let's say you're an individual who either A, is the one that's submitting on November 1st, or you're the individual who uh, is, is giving this information to somebody else. If you're submitting on November 1st, please make sure that you've already in advance spoken to your recommenders uh, and give them a heads up that they're gonna receive a link immediately after submission uh, of your supplemental application so that they can upload. Thank you. Um, a, a lot of good questions. I was just writing them down while you were answering that. Um, one that we got is, what is the average class size in the courses that BAMD students would be taking? That's a good question. A lot of students think that um, the courses that they're taking if they're tucked into the BMD program are just classes with BMD students. We actually do not separate you from the general population of students on our campus. We want to immerse you in the college life and, and not silo you from your college experience that you're going to gain. So the class size really depends on the type of educational program you're going to be pursuing and the class itself. We do have some very large lectures, which go up to about 100 students. Um, and then we also have classes on the lower side, which ranges anywhere between 20 and 50 students per class. Um, every large lecture um, that we have also comes with a recitation, which gives you the ability to have more of a um, about anywhere between 20 to 30 students where you have more of an opportunity to speak with your professor one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, but for the most part, um, aside from those large lecture style, uh, I would say anywhere between 30 and 50 students per class is like a normal size. Thank you. Um, I do have a couple more questions written down, but I see one that we could fairly quickly answer. Um, someone said they submitted the RUN admissions application and didn't receive, they thought they would receive an email after that with the supplemental application, but they haven't. Would they be able to just apply using the application link on our website? And I believe the answer to that is yes, unless I'm wrong, Dean Falenz. But yes, right, they could go on and access the application online. They can, yes. So then, yes. The link that's on our website is what you can use for that. So 
whoever that was that asked it, definitely go ahead and submit. Um, how many students, and I don't know if this is a question that you even know the answer to, but what does the acceptance rate look like for these students and, you know, what kind of cohort size can they anticipate with other BAMD students? Yeah, it's a good question. Typically, we get anywhere between four to 500 applicants each cycle. Uh, from that, we typically have anywhere between 50 to 60 um, applicants who we invite in for our first round of interviews. Uh, this year, if anybody does have any questions about that, it will be uh, via phone. Uh, so your first round interviews will be uh, via phone. Uh, from there, we typically end up recommending about anywhere between 30 to about 45 applicants to NGMS, who then they do their own internal review of all the applications. They will then invite in uh, the top applicants for the final interview, which as of right now is in person, but should we get more information, we'll definitely let you know. Um, and then typically about 15 to 20 are normally accepted and anywhere between uh, four to eight normally matriculate. So that means of the students that accept, they might have gone somewhere else or they decide they want to stay, but a typical size, uh, cohort size coming in is about four to eight uh, students um, for the cohort. Thank you. Someone asked, and I think this is a question that I know the answer to, which is exciting. Um, someone asked about a Honors College versus HLLC, which is our Honors Living Learning Community, and what the difference is between those two. So definitely jump in if there's anything I missed, Dean Flynn. But um, the structure of the programs is slightly different. So um, Honors College is based around you working with our Honors College program and advisors to do your own thesis. So that would include research and a special project in which you would write and defend a thesis at the end of your time here, um, which is an incredible opportunity, especially if you want to go on to continue to do research, be published, um, that is great practice for you. Um, the Honors Living Learning Community is a different model in which the students live and learn together. So there is a residence hall on campus that the Honors Living Learning Community students live in. Um, they are in cohorts of classes together. Um, and they do special projects as well with one another, um, but with a slightly different focus. So Honors College would be more like research that you are focusing on with a faculty member. And HLLC, um, a lot of their focus is on social ju justice, community engagement, um, and how to improve the world around them. Um, and so, you know, both really amazing opportunities, um, but slightly different in the ways that they operate and, and the students that may choose to participate in them. Um, okay, next question, which I thought was such a good question is, this student was a little concerned in light of COVID about internships and job opportunities and shadowing opportunities maybe not being as available because of COVID. So what are some ways that you think these students will still be able to compete when it comes to others in their field, applying to special programs? I know if admitted into the BAMD program, they are guaranteed admission, but maybe some of these students won't be admitted, but will still come to Rutgers Newark and be medical school students one day. So what are some things that you've seen going on or you know, any advice you have about that? Yeah, definitely. So one of the first things that I'll definitely mention about that is one of the benefits of being at our institution and being in such a very high, dense, populated, metropolitan type of environment is that we have tons of hospitals, clinics, and things of that nature within our area who are consistently looking for uh, volunteers, people to come in and intern, and there's many different types of volunteer programs at these facilities, even one that's right next to our institution. Uh, so there are many opportunities to still obtain this type of experience, even through COVID. Um, now I know that may be alarming for some students, but it's one of those things also where you all are going to become future doctors and becoming a future doctor means you're going to be working and volunteering in environments such as this. Um, so. To answer that question in short, there are still many opportunities, but should you be an individual who is a um, little weary of, of doing that in person because of COVID right now, there are also many other opportunities that we have, such as virtual shadowing 
and, uh, and other platforms like that where you can still have a very uh, extensive resume by the time you get ready to apply for a special program or a professional program in the future. So whether you're looking for in-person or virtual experience, we have a lot to offer. Thank you. Um, a couple of students asked about SAT and ACT scores and worried uh, are worried about college board delays in light of COVID. And some students are taking the exam in October, as in I think there's an exam tomorrow, someone even wrote, um, and they're concerned about those scores getting in by November 1st. So what is your take on that? Any advice you can provide for them or if those scores would still be um, permissible if arriving a little bit after the rest of their application materials? Any test taken in October, we will accept your scores. Uh, you still have to submit your application by November 1st. What we'll do is uh, the individuals who have taken their test in October, we will um, review your entire application and wait on whether or not we're moving forward based on that score that we receive that you've submitted to our admissions office. Uh, so again, any test taken in October, we will accept the score. Typically that score comes out within the first or second week of November, which we're all very aware of. So as soon as you have it, we need you to submit it as soon as possible. Um, if you're one of those individuals and you wanna just assure that we have it after you've already sent it to admissions and everybody else, definitely feel free to send me an email and, uh, and I will make sure to update your supplemental application. Thank you. Let's see. Someone asked, is it easy to travel off campus for work or volunteer opportunities without a car? What's it like in Newark and around campus? And I will say there is a lot of public transportation right around the university. You know, we have the buses, we have the light rail, which is this very cool train bus hybrid that glides around the city on wires like an old fashioned trolley, but much more high tech. Um, we also have the NJ trans Transit trains um, at Newark Penn Station and Broad Street Station. Um, the Broad Street Station is like a couple minutes walk almost from at least our office on campus. I know that we have some buildings that are spread out a little bit more than others, but I would say the public transportation is very accessible. And so if you don't have a car, um, you definitely will still be able to not only get around campus, but also get around if you have work or volunteer experiences. A lot of the students that I work with don't have cars purposefully. They're like, there's so much public transportation. Students get discounts on NJ Transit. Um, I'm not even gonna bother with a car. I'm just gonna use public transport to get to and from school. Um, so that is definitely a big plus. Um, Dean Salenz, someone wanted to know, is there a way to check if your application made it or if your application materials made it? Yeah, if you want to send me an email, I can confirm it for you. Like I said, if you received that summary, it went through. If you didn't, then you should definitely still email me anyway because something may have <laughs> happened, whether maybe you, you accidentally didn't verify something or submit something. So if you want to send me an email, I can always verify if we received it or not. Thank you. So someone asked if they need a specific MCAT or GPA for medical school. And I think it might be helpful for folks who, you know, do end up in the BAMD program to know, you know, what steps that they would take for those preparatory exams or GPAs for medical school, but also maybe some students who don't end up in the BAMD program, what kind of scores and GPAs they may be looking at as well, if, the, if it's different even. No, yeah, that's a great question. Um, typically, any health program that you're looking at, the GPA range that you want to stay within is that 3.5 and above GPA. That's a very competitive GPA. It shows uh, that you are part of a rigorous program and you did well. Um, as far as if medical school is definitely the option, which I would imagine all it is for all of you since you're applying for a medical type of program, uh, the MCAT would also be the next big factor. So the MCAT is a requirement, even if you are accepted into the BMD program. For the BMD program, although we don't have a set score, what I can say is typically our students uh, score around the 512 and above range. 
which is a really good score to have for your MCAT. And our students are scoring that based on how well our, our, our curriculum is at Rutgers University North. So we work with you. We have a lot of resources, a lot of free resources for you to make sure that you're going to be in a position to obtain a high MCAT score. Now, if you're not accepted into this program, the MCAT very, uh, it, it definitely ranges based on the type of medical school you want to go to, what state. So that's a little bit more trickier to answer. But what I would say is if you're around that 508 range, that would be like an average for a decent school uh, within the metropolitan area. Thank you. All right, so I am going to just move into the next slide. We'll still hang around to answer questions, but I am going to move into the next slide so that you all, before you start heading out, do have ways to contact us. Um, I know Dean Flynn did mention another email address, which is his. I didn't put it on here because I didn't necessarily want his email inbox to be more flooded than it already is, but um, you can definitely email him as well, like he said, but we do have an Instagram that you can connect with us on. I say you should definitely follow the Instagram because if we are having more events like this, that's where you're going to find the info for them. We always have the link in our bio and we always have the flyer with information posted as an Instagram post. Um, also, I included the email addresses for our pre-professional services unit, which is what Dean Flens oversees, but you could also Get, reach him at his email, and then um, I also included the email for our admissions counselor. If you have questions specifically about the Rutgers Newark app side of it all, um, Mr. Acosta in admissions is also, his email is on the screen. Um, and then the pre-professional services website is where you'll find the BAMD webpage, some information about our other health programs and um, resources for students who are pursuing medical school. And so I linked that there as well. So definitely take a screenshot, write down that info. Um, and I'm going to, before we move on to answer a few more questions before we have to head out, I'm going to go ahead and end the recording. So folks who are on the recording, thank you for joining before, us. Before you yeah. end that uh, recording, I just want to say one more thing because it yeah. doesn't and that just came in, which is huge, that everybody needs to know about. And the question was, are scholarships for participants in the BAMD program? And yes, if you are accepted into this program, uh, your tuition, room, and board is paid for by the School of Arts and Sciences at, a, at an in-state uh, rate. So that means if you're out of state, there may, uh, there may be uh, an additional fee you have to pay. But uh, we pay everything for in-state tuition rates. Uh, so that's huge as far as scholarship money. Uh, that's essentially everything paid for uh, while you're here at our institution. That is incredible. I'm so glad that you said that before our folks on the recording ended up tuning out. Um, so, wow, that's great info. Um, I'm going to end the recording. So folks on the recording who are watching this back at a later point in time, thank you for joining us for the last. 35 minutes or so, or whatever it might have been. Um, and we definitely look forward to hopefully having you here at Rutgers University Newark.